It's good to be gathered together again today. As we enter into September, as the seasons shift, as students and teachers return to school, as the rhythms of fall return, our weekly worship is making a shift as well and returning to our sanctuary. We're grateful for the gifts of technology that make it possible for us to be together, albeit virtually, in this place. So light a candle, have your communion elements at the ready, and let's enter into this worship experience together. There isn't an aspect of our life together that hasn't been affected by the ongoing realities of this global pandemic. In fact, just being together is the hardest thing to do. But each day, somehow, we go about our work and life continues. As a community of faith, scattered but still united, we return once again to God's story as it's laid out in Scripture. As the ancient chronicles speak of how God remains relentless in God's pursuit to stay connected to us, and God's expectation that we stay connected to one another. Reflecting on this truth, the Apostle Paul wrote to the early church in Rome, I'm convinced nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. For the next six weeks, we'll be exploring how our physically distant realities don't change the spiritual truth of God's love for us and how we should live in response. As we begin worship this fall, we're beginning by grounding ourselves in a place of connection. Connection to God and to each other. The reality in a time of pandemic is that it is more loving to not be physically close. But we also hold fast to the reality that we need each other deeply. We also need to be reminded that we are connected to God like no other time. So this is where we begin. In Paul's letter to the Romans, we are reassured that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Not pandemics. Not social distancing. Not virtual worship or school or work. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not the cracks in creation, our doubts, or our brokenness. Not our anxieties, our unhealthy patterns, or our sins. Not our accomplishments, our failures, or our indecision. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And so we begin worship where we are most connected to God and one another at the table. In the night before he was betrayed, Jesus' disciples did not know. They could not know what was coming. They couldn't imagine being separated from their friend. Jesus knew that his followers needed earthly reminders of his presence and love. And so Jesus gathered them around the table and shared the a holy meal, giving himself as presence and portion for the time when his friends could not touch him. Jesus took bread, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so we eat. We we eat together and we remember that we are not alone. That we are gathered into one body by the promise that God is with us. So let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come, taste and see that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you for these days and keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks that in this meal, you accompany us into all aspects of our lives. May this meal fill us with joy in your presence and compassion to share your love with others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Lord God, Grand Architect of the Universe, your design of creation is unflawed, yet we continue to litter your creation with defects and imperfections. Show us how not to destroy but to create, not to demean but to uplift, not to hate but to love, so that your creation may be made perfect once again. Amen. Today we read the second account of creation from Genesis chapters 2 and 3. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, 
and the man became a living being. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and she also that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Good morning. It is time for the children's message, so I would like to invite all of the kids and people of all ages to gather around. Today we're talking about the creation story. And so I thought it would be fun for us to do some creating. As we just heard in the story, God created all of the earth and the stars and the heavens. So I am going to use various foods that I found in the kitchen to create things. First we'll make the sun out of orange slices, just like so. And I have cut some slices of bread here to look like clouds to put into the sky. God created this luscious garden that we call the Garden of Eden. And there were trees and plants in that garden. So this tree is gonna be made out of crackers and we'll use pea pods to be the branches and the green leaves on the tree. And here I'm going to use stems from asparagus and raspberries to make some flowers. So we have flowers and we have trees. And then if you recall, there was this one tree that people were not supposed to eat from. So we will put that tree over here where it is pretty prominent. We'll fill it all in. We will fill the tree in with lots of green and this particular tree had fruit on it. The Bible doesn't say what kind of fruit. We sometimes assume it's apples, but here we have these beautiful red pieces of fruit that might be something people would really want to eat. And God made animals. So here we have an animal made out of blueberries with a blackberry as its head. And God made a human. So we'll use a blackberry and carrots for the body and the legs and the arms. And there we have our amazing creation. And God asked 
this first person named Adam to name the animals. God could have done that himself, but God asked Adam to do it. He wanted humans to participate in this. So what do you think this animal would be called? Maybe it's a dog or a cat, or it's probably big enough. It could be a pony or a horse. But God realized that this human didn't have anybody who was like him. And thus God created another person who we will call Eve. Here are the arms and legs and body and the blackberry as a head. And now there were two people and God sees that this creation is good. So I would encourage you to try something like this at home and see how creative you can be. Because it is September, we are again starting at the beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis. And we will continue throughout the school year talking about God's story. At Christmas, we get to Jesus and the story of Jesus up until Easter. So we're doing something new and fun this year. We're going to create our own story Bibles. Each week, you will find a color page on our website and this week there are two and you can print and color and put it in a three ring notebook and by spring you will have an entire story Bible you might want to draw on the back of the page or write some things about the story so that you can use this to tell this story to others as well so look for those color sheets on the website Let's have a prayer. Dear God, thank you for creating the sun, the moon, the stars, the clouds, and trees and plants and animals and people and everything else in creation. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week, I had the opportunity to spend some time up north on the north shore of Lake Superior. Like most of you, I had not been anywhere for seven months, so it felt great to be out and about and exploring God's creation. Most of the license plates we saw were from Minnesota, with a few more from Wisconsin and only a handful from other places. So I was glad to see that people were staying close to home and wearing masks and yet enjoying the state parks and the great outdoors. Being outside like that makes me appreciate and think about God and God's creation. There is something about getting outside in the sun and the wind, out in the forests and on the trails, seeing the majesty of the rocks and water, the sky that goes on endlessly. This always makes me think of God's creation and how amazing and vast and majestic it is. If you're like me, you've spent a lot of time this spring and summer outdoors. I've found as I've gone for walks in my neighborhood that I am exploring areas and discovering things I didn't know about before. I've been much more attuned to the changing of the seasons and all the details of creation. I love to take pictures. So part of how I've dealt with the pandemic is to take pictures of the beauty of creation each time I am outside. Immersing ourselves in forests and flowers, gardening and hiking, Biking and time on the water helps to center us as humans, to put us back into right relationship with God. When surrounded by all this beauty, how can we question God's presence? Today we read from Genesis chapter 2, the second creation story. We are probably most familiar with Genesis chapter 1. 
in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that it was good. There was evening, and there was morning the first day. Chapter 1 is a cosmic look at creation, from the gigantic to the tiniest details. It is poetry. And when God finishes creating humans in God's image, God sees that it is good. Chapter 2 tells the story a bit differently. God creates this Garden of Eden with trees and plants. God shapes humans from the dust of the earth. This is the story we refer to on Ash Wednesday when we make the sign of the cross on people's foreheads and say, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. It is an earthy story. God is very personal taking the clay like a potter would and carefully crafting a person. God from the very beginning wants to be in relationship with us. God is near, not far away. God asks humans to name the animals. God could do that himself, and yet he partners with us to do that. God sees that humans need to have other humans to relate to and create partners. And it is the paradise that we see when we explore nature. Genesis chapter 2 quickly moves into chapter 3, where we suddenly see how creation is not so good. We can relate to this in this time of pandemic. Starting in March, When the world shut down, our lives have been disrupted in every respect. Not work or school or church or shopping or sports or anything else looks like it did pre-pandemic. This has created economic hardship and job losses. We've seen how disparities in our society are very great. I have walked by numerous tent encampments and seen hunger issues. We've realized how people in rural areas don't have the same kind of internet capacity that we enjoy in the city. And the black and brown communities have been disproportionately hit by the pandemic. Earlier this week on the first day of school, it was 48 degrees. This unseasonably cold weather has showed us that the coming months might be very cold and dark and isolated. Out west, they've had all sorts of huge forest fires and a freak snowstorm hit Colorado this week. All of this at a time of political divisiveness. We all, in some manner or another, are experiencing COVID fatigue. This might mean we're irritable, or can't sleep well, or are short-tempered with people that we love. We don't know when we'll have a vaccine or how effective it will be. As I read the story in Genesis 3, I often wonder, why is there this devious snake in the garden? Why did God put that tree in the middle of the garden? Didn't God know that things would go sour? I have come to better understand this story and this desire to have what is on that tree from my cat Milo. You may have met this very cute cat through Zoom meetings or pictures on Facebook. I mean, what is not to love about this face? But even when he has plenty of cat food and cat treats, when I am making food, he wants to hop on the counter and help himself to people food mostly because he knows he's not supposed to have it. This is just like us with that tree. This story shows us the cracks in creation, the entry of sin into the world. Sin is broken relationships, broken relationship with God, broken relationships with each other. So how do we find hope? Genesis chapters 2 and 3 show us that the world is not 
interpret. This is where the Bible begins. And today, we begin our new series called Nothing Can Separate Us. Even with these cracks in creation, we see that God and God's love is a constant. Why is this tree in the garden? I don't know. Why is COVID in the world? I don't know that either. I find hope that this is not the end, but the beginning. Despite the problems in the world, the sin, and all the ways that we as humans mess up, God is still there. God wants to be in relationship with us. I am reminded how good God's creation is each time I dig in the garden or we see flowers or trees or the majesty of creation in lakes and blue sky or when we see a rainbow following a rainstorm. God is there. I cannot tell you how this pandemic is going to end, but I can assure you that God is there, that nothing can separate us from God. This is what we're going to celebrate with our ninth graders on Wednesday, as four of them affirm their baptisms in the service of confirmation at our outdoor worship service. And this is the promise we're going to celebrate the following Wednesday at Park and Pray when we baptize one of our children. The Apostle Paul articulates it well when he says that nothing, not death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor thing pre things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Good morning, Prince of Peace. It's fall, getting to be fall, and it's normally when our choirs would be starting to rehearse and get music ready to enhance our worship services. But unfortunately, we're still virtual, but Kathy and Melissa and I are gonna be working hard to bring you uh, small ensembles or some sorts of groups. So until we can all see you in person, the picture you will be seeing real soon is a greeting from the uh, choirs, and we hope you like our small quartet of bells.
gathered together as the people of God and trusting that God hears our prayers, let us pray for the needs of all the world. God of all creation, we give you thanks for the gifts that we have in this world, the connectedness that we have with the birds of the air, the animals of the land, and the creatures of the sea. We give you thanks for the air, water, and land that are necessary for our lives. Make us wise stewards of these gifts. And where we have done damage, give us compassion and resourcefulness for repair and reconciliation. We pray for those who have been fighting fires and cleaning up after hurricanes, those who have been displaced by storms in their lives. Inspire in us the will to tackle climate change and help us to value the lives of all of your beloved creation. In these days of pandemic, Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to guide our steps. Be with those who are struggling economically, with loneliness or with anxiety. Be with our leaders for good decision making. And above all, give us your hope that in all things you promise that nothing can separate us from your love. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. As we collect and receive and give thanks for our offerings, I'd like to give you an update on one of our ministry partners, one of those organizations that we support financially uh, to help spread the love and grace of God out into the world. So a little update today on an organization that is well known in our community, the Sheridan Story. Prince of Peace has a long relationship with Sheridan Story, partnering with Central Park Elementary School. In normal years, groups of volunteers head to Central Park on Fridays and put bags of weekend food right into the backpacks of kids who struggle with food insecurity. It's one way that we help share uh, love with those families right in our neighborhoods who um, don't always have access to the means to provide food over the weekend. When the pandemic hit and schools closed, Sheridan Story quickly pivoted to provide districts with food bags that they could then distribute at their own designated food drop-off points. The Sheridan Story increased their food output this spring by 400%, delivering 100,000 meals a week to over 37% of Minnesota's school children. Unfortunately, we know that the need for food only increased this summer and Sheridan Story delivered. The demand, however, keeps growing. We are proud at Prince of Peace to provide financial assistance to the Sheridan Story and the vital work that they do. Please know that your gifts make a huge impact. Thank you for your gifts and your offerings and the way that you support the ministry of Prince of Peace and how we as a community support organizations like the Sheridan Story. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you remain so deeply connected with us. Thank you for the partnership that we have with the Sheridan Story. Continue to bless their efforts. By their work and their witness, awaken us to the needs of others. Help us to reflect your generosity so that we might bring all the world together at your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. If you want to learn more, or how to help in more ways through The Sheridan Story, you can go to their website, thesheridanstory.org. Thank you for your generosity and your gifts. 
Well, thank you for joining us today. Just a few announcements before we go. It's Virtual God's Work Our Hands Sunday. These are projects that you can do individually or as a household throughout September. And they're included, and we've been talking about them in our emails and on our website. There are two that I want to highlight for you today. You can pick up fleece tie blankets today, here Sunday, September 13th, uh, this afternoon at the church, or any Wednesday at Park and Pray Wednesday worship services. Also, this afternoon, uh, outdoor socially distant conversation is available with our affordable housing team at 4 o'clock. So bring your lawn chair and come and be a part of that conversation. Now today also kicks off our new Sunday morning schedule. Know that uh, this worship premiered at 8.30 a.m., at 9.30 a.m. on Zoom, we have an opportunity for some fellowship. We call it Coffee, Cookies, and Conversation. Join with some other folks. Uh, perhaps uh, we break you up into some smaller groups just so you can get to know one another and have some deeper conversation, check in with each other. Uh, it's a wonderful time of fellowship. That goes right into, at 10 o'clock, our adult forum. You can come in right at 10 o'clock or come early and be a part of that Coffee, Cookies, and Conversation. Adult Forum today, our topic is going to be led by Scott Tunseth, and he's giving a presentation entitled Living in a Cracked World, the Power and Promise of Evil. Then next Sunday on September 20th, I'll be exploring ways in which being doubtful is also being faithful. Now, at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings for the month of September, you can join Pastor Betsy here at Prince of Peace for Sidewalk Sunday School. This is for our three-year-old through sixth graders and family members that need to be with them. Foundations for seventh through twelfth grade, that will be starting up later this month, and we encourage you to keep your eyes on the emails and information as it comes out. Confirmation classes kick off again today, Sunday, September 13th as well. Now, next Wednesday, come and be a part of our Park and Pray worship because we're going to have a special evening where we'll be celebrating with four families here at Prince of Peace as four of our ninth graders will be affirming their baptisms in the rite of confirmation. We're going to record that and have that be a part of our worship uh, together this Wednesday and we'll see that in our recorded worship video later this fall on Reformation Sunday. Now, Receive this blessing as we go. Nothing has separated us, is separating, nor will separate you from God. Nothing in life, not even death, can do it. No one, not even the most powerful, can come between you and God. No barrier exists that is too big, too wide, too high, or too difficult to keep God's love from you. Jesus made this possible, and the Holy Spirit keeps making it true every single day. Amen. Go in peace. Stay connected to God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.